Today, Bitcoin hovers near $76,000 after the week's major post-election rally. Detroit says residents can soon make payments to the city in crypto. And Robinhood Crypto's Johan Kabrat shares what he thinks Trump's victory means for crypto markets and the industry. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Crypto markets holding their weekly gains as investors continue to digest the outcome of U.S. elections and the Fed's quarter point rate cut yesterday. Now, as of noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded flat just shy of $76,000. Ether, meanwhile, climbed 2% to $2,900. And Dogecoin remained steady following a meme coin rally. Now, for the week, Bitcoin spiked 10%, Ether 16%, and Doge more than 20% all outperforming traditional markets. The S&P 500 index jumped more than 4.5% in one week as of midday. There's also been a surge among crypto-focused stocks as the industry in the U.S. largely anticipates a friendlier regulatory climate under a Trump administration. As of noon Eastern, Coinbase rocketed 43%. Robinhood surged 25%. MicroStrategy climbed 15%. And Bitcoin miner Marathon rose more than 16%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Shares of Block are sliding after it reported worse than expected revenue in the third quarter. The company, formerly known as Square, brought in $5.98 billion versus analyst estimates of $6.24 billion in revenue. Earnings per share did come in at $0.88, cents, just slightly higher than analyst estimates of $0.87. Cents. In a conversation with CNBC, the company's finance chief, Amrita Ahuja, pointed to earnings growth and said that analysts focus more on gross profit than on revenue. In a shareholder letter, Block said that it's winding down TBD, the firm's blockchain development arm, as well as scaling back its investment in music streaming service title. The report went on to say that this shift in focus would give the company room to invest in its Bitcoin mining initiative, as well as BitKey, its Bitcoin self-custody wallet. Now, as of noon Eastern, shares of Block slid around 4.5%. Next, Detroit will let residents pay taxes and city fees in crypto. The Office of the Treasury put out a notice yesterday saying that Detroit will become the largest U.S. city to accept crypto payments for taxes and fees. The payments will be done through a platform managed by PayPal. Detroit's mayor expressed excitement to be one of the first major U.S. cities to, quote, explore blockchain civic applications that allow residents to use their cryptocurrency as a payment option. The city said residents can expect to start making crypto crypto payments in mid-2025. All right, the crypto industry is still weighing in on the 2024 election results, and I caught up with Johan Cabrat of Robinhood Crypto to get his take. I also asked him to respond to reports that the firm's chief legal officer could take up a job at the SEC under the next Trump administration. Okay, so let's start with the markets, where we've seen massive moves since Election Day. Robinhood said this week that it had its biggest ever equities overnight session since launching a 24-hour market. Talk to me about your reaction to this recent surge in Bitcoin's price since Donald Trump won the White House and whether this kind of trading activity on Robinhood's platform has held on to that momentum. Yeah, you know, it was a really exciting moment for the entire company here. Uh, we are always very happy when we see customers engaging with the platform and when we see that our platform is able to uh, support all the volume coming from from customers. I think for for us on the crypto side, uh, it was especially a big moment because you know the all time high for for Bitcoin. It's always uh, kind of funny to think about you know two years ago where Bitcoin was. It was uh, not even a, a fraction of uh, the current price. So it's it's really really uh, exciting for our customers. And um, you know I think the the election have also marked a, a few things. Uh, we saw a lot of Senator elected that were pro crypto. We also saw, um, you know, that there is a bit of uh, uh, excitement around the crypto regulation coming from uh, from the parties. So, you know, overall, I think it's a it's been a good week for for the crypto world. You mentioned Bitcoin hitting an all time high. There have been a few of those happening this week. Has all this trading momentum on your platform held up? Yeah, we 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 seen a, a lot of activity on the crypto volume, uh, Bitcoin especially, and also. You know we can see it on multiple part of our platform so we we offer bitcoin on on robin crypto obviously but we also have bitcoin etf on on the equity side and on the retirement side so we're also seeing activity there you mentioned election results clearly has sweeping implications for the future of crypto in the u.s a crypto friendly president and uh, more than 280 crypto friendly lawmakers 
what's your thinking on the impact of this new Congress and administration for Robinhood and the broader crypto industry? What sorts of policy changes, for example, do you expect to see? Well, you know, I, I think that's something that we've been asking for a long time. It was to actually have clear policies around crypto. And so uh, we, we are hopeful that with uh, all these, these lawmakers that are more uh, crypto interested or friendly, like you said, are, are going to help us uh, getting there. I think, you know, we've started to see in the past few years that the U.S. was getting kind of behind some of the other uh, countries like uh, Europe, for example, are launching their media fram framework um, in January. And so, you know, we really wanted the, the U.S. to also adopt a framework that can work uh, for, for crypto. And, you know, Robinhood is regulated both by the SEC, by FINRA on the crypto side. We are regulated by the New York DFS. We know how to work with regulators. So we are um, excited to keep working with them and to make sure that they can actually um, help us get this framework out and, and that we can use it in the future to give the access to, to customer uh, to, to crypto. I think, you know, clearly what we've seen from either the election or, or what happened on Wednesday is that uh, customers are looking to get into the, the crypto world. So we want to make it easy and, and safe for them. Now, Robinhood has faced scrutiny from the SEC under the Biden administration. Obviously, the dynamic of the commission is about to change under the Trump administration. Are you expecting that the Wells notice you received earlier this year to go away? You know, I, I, I couldn't comment on this and, and clearly I, I, I don't even know if it's something that uh, they, they could consider. I think what we are more looking forward is um, how can we help them and, and how can we get a framework for, for crypto? Overall, if you look at uh, our posture from the beginning, we, we adopted a very safety first approach. We only had uh, a few assets on the platform. We are confident that none of the assets on the platform are securities. And so, you know, our goal is really to work with them and help them uh, get to a place where we can have crypto in the U.S. In a, in a safe way. Now, we've been talking about trading action happening on your platform, but I've also been looking at Robinhood stock. You're up 26 percent over the past five days. And, you know, I've been speaking to analysts. A lot of them think that this has to do with the fact that Donald Trump has promised to oust Gary Gensler from his role as chairman of the SEC. That could potentially mean that, you uh, enforcement actions that he had planned might go away. I know that you're not going to comment on whether or not that happens, but do you think that that's, uh, do you think that there are any other price drivers behind why Robinhood is doing so well? So potentially different SEC chair, uh, crypto having a friendlier Congress behind it. Any other, any other drivers here? You know, I think we've been also uh, launching a lot of new, new product this year. If you, if you think about uh, the, the year, um, we, we have a lot of big announcements and, and just, you know, last month we had our Hood Summit in, in Florida. It's the first time that we did a, a retail focused conference and we, we announced a lot of new product like Futures, uh, a new web product called Legend. Um, and on the crypto side, we've, we've also kind of uh, always accelerated in the past uh, 12 months. We, we announced the acquisition of the exchange called Bitstamp. Uh, we, we also launched our, our product in the EU. So. Um, you know, I think it's just the market uh, looking at all the, the good um, products that we've been shipping and, and just being excited about it. Now, separately, there have been reports that Robinhood's chief legal officer could be under consideration for a role in the SEC. Do you have anything that you could add to that? You know, I think at this point, as far as I know, at least uh, it's just a rumor. And, you know, Dan had multiple uh, position at the SEC. So it, it, it definitely makes sense that he, he could be considered and uh, being the, the amazing person he is, I'm sure it would be uh, on, on that list. But at, at this point, the only thing I know is that it's just a rumor. Uh, will Robinhood, more broadly, as an organization, have any position or connection in the next administration? You know, Trump talked on the campaign trail about forming a crypto council to advise him on policy. So I... Not at this point. I think, uh, you know, our goal at Robinhood is to be able to work with any administration. We, we exist since 2013. We had different uh, and various administration and, and our goal is to keep working and, and have this open dialogue. I think, you know, if you think about crypto, it's a, it's a very fast moving pace. It's very complicated. It was made by an engineer for an engineer, in, in my opinion, sometimes. And, you know, we, we want to help policymakers to understand it and help them uh, drives the right prediction uh, for, for the customers. I, I do think, you know, that policies are needed. Like, you know, when you look at what happened back in the days for, for FTX or, or even before with Mongox, 
you know, like some level of policies is needed to make sure that these type of mistakes will never happen again. Um, and so we, we are open to have an open dialogue with them and, and discuss about that. Now, outside the U.S., Robinhood has been working hard to expand its business globally. Are you on pace to continue that growth? And are you prepared for increased competition as MECA guidelines come into focus and more companies register? Yeah, you know, I think the, the MECA guidelines are going to be helpful for a lot of competitors and, and for Robinhood as well. You know, it will, it will basically give us the access to the entire market. Um, and, you know, in terms of population, it's almost as big as, as the U.S. So um, it, it's definitely something exciting. Um, but that's also why, you know, we did this, this speed stamp acquisition. Um, their license portfolios, they have about 50 licenses, help us uh, expand internationally more quickly. We also uh, get customers from, from UK, from Singapore, from the EU. Um, and the, the second thing is, you know, Robinhood is still a very special product. We are able to make very complicated um, uh, interface actually simple. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people are liking the product and the education tool that we have on the platform. Um, and, and based on that, we are, we are confident that we can keep grabbing market share. Okay, that's all for Crypto World this week, but we'll be back again on Monday and we'll see you then.